Hi, I'm Caleb. I've been using model trains and videos for years, but I don't have the best track record when it comes to customizations. I'm trying to get better at it, so join me as I dive into the world of miniature modeling. This is Caleb's Trains. This video is not made for kids. I will be showcasing dangerous tools and toxic materials that are potentially hazardous. Children should not have access to these, and please remember to use proper safety techniques. Thanks. Hmm, said Sir Topham Hat. These big engines are always causing me trouble. Big engines are always causing me trouble. Big engines are always causing me trouble. In making these new models, I've certainly experienced my fair share of frustrations. But no engine has caused me more headache than Gordon the Big Engine. Unfortunately, Gordon is a staple character, and I couldn't really get away with not doing him. So I had no choice but to pull myself together and make it happen. Pull yourself together, Big G. Bachman Gordon uses the same chassis as Henry and features some noticeable inaccuracies in the cabin tender. These simply won't do for Sodor's premier express engine. My work was cut out for me, and I may just need some help to get over this hill. The 3D body shell was designed by the LBSC Thomas and printed by the train modeler. At the time of making this video, it's been one year since Gordon was printed. You guys know the drill. Sanding, filling, and priming were the ticket to a smooth surface. His running board was especially tricky, and I had to get creative for the sandpaper to reach all of the nooks and crannies. The tender I decided to use was an old one, sporting a clear coat that had gone horribly wrong. I had a nice tender, but I figured since I'd have to strip the details from it anyway, I may as well make the old one useful again. I sanded down the rippled coat, and then used a Dremel tool to cut away the inaccurate curve at the rear of the tender. Gordon's tender ends each have an arch to them on his prop, so I used plastic card to construct these shapes. I also made a little plastic card coal chute just for fun. After some primer, I coated his running board in Tamiya Red, and then set up a mask for his smoke box. If you've seen the other making videos, you know how this went. Several days later. I used primer for the gray of his running board and then fixed the messy smoke box edge with a couple more coats of blue. He then gained buffers, modeled by yours truly, and then I used Tamiya masking tape to mask off his smoke box supports for hand painting. His stripes were also done with Tamiya tape, and I got everything else ready for red. I finished up his running board by adding the details. I don't think I've ever said what couplings I've been using, but they're Hornby dummy screw links. So far, so good, right? Well, the lining didn't quite turn out by Gordon's cab, so I thought if I sprayed some French blue into a cap and brushed it on, I could fix up the messy edges. The thing is though, spray paint is very concentrated when you try to apply it with a brush. Yeah. The colors didn't match at all, and I had to admit defeat and start over. I masked the rest of them off, sprayed another couple coats of blue, and recut the tape for lining. This time, we were okay. I went for his yellow next, and then moved on to his handrails. Gordon was really coming together. Or, so I thought. For most of my models, I've been masking the numbers using vinyl pieces as stencils. I went for the same approach with Gordon, and it totally flopped. I had no choice but to sand and respray. And then I had to sand and respray. At this point, vinyl was just gonna have to be the way. And then the buffer chipped. Gordon's chassis was hands down the most difficult part of this model. I thinned his side rugs no problem and shortened his trailing wheel piece, but when it came time to run him, Something was wrong, and it wasn't just because I hadn't put one of his eccentric rods on correctly. No, it was something else. With the motor whirring, but the wheels not moving, my suspicion was that a gear somewhere inside was worn down or broken. Something's broken inside you, Gordon. This was simply above my pay grade. 
I was going to need professional help. As famous as me? Nonsense! I turned to my friend Brendan, who was kind enough to help me out. Okay, well. And by help me out, I mean do it for me. Sure, I do that as well. That's ruined! <laughs> What did, did you do? do? What did you do? Oh no. Oh, the teeth are gone. You can see the difference. The teeth are missing here and here and then here. They're all there. Thanks, man. You're a lifesaver. As suspected, it was a worn down gear. Did you film that? <laughs> I felt the heat on my toe and I was like <gasps> I was lucky that I had a spare motor housing piece and Brendan was able to replace the broken gear. Gordon came back home a running engine again. Then I used a bread tie to make the coupling to attach his tender. A touch of weathering here and there and at last Gordon was ready. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a comment and subscribing. It means a lot. Thank you.